Welcome back, everybody. This is Cosmic Gusta, and I apologize for the post commentary in the last episode, but I have just been having a nightmare trying to record these. It is a lot more difficult than I was expecting. Anyway, uh, in the last part, we took down two quests of little importance, but that's not true. They're all important. And we got two sidekicks and an egg that will eventually become a third sidekick. And on this one, we're going to have fun with an asshole. And I'm going to let you guys' mind wander there, but I know exactly what I'm doing, and I'm sure at least one of you will probably be sorely disappointed. Um, so we're going to go up here and get started on this quest. Uh, I mentioned previously that I hate a certain character. Uh, he walked out of the bar. And it's this fat bastard right here. His name is Nicolo, and he is an asshole. But we're going to talk to him, because he's important. My name's Nicolo. I'm a traveling merchant. The highway is full of bandits. It's too dangerous to leave this town. Don't you think so? Pfft, no. Have you seen me? Have you seen my massive axe? Oh, he's going to make me rich, is he? Well, sure, why not? Nicolo's business unusual. Part of one of many. That's the thing that they don't tell you, and that's how they get you. Because you're stuck... Well, you're not really stuck. You've had the option of doing these. Um, but you're going to see this guy a lot, and every single time, it's not going to be fun. So we need to go talk to Tiopo, who is a British teapot, and I will save you the embarrassment of my British accent. Or, probably not, actually. Oh, it's the cold out. Hello, Gov. How you been? How's your mum? How's a spot of tea sound? Hey, hey. So he's gonna try his uh, trick here to sell useless garbage to the poor magical teapot, and we'll see how it's going. It's clearly not going too well. Hang on, then, Gov. Even I can tell it ain't no regular wheel. I'll take it. How much you want? See, you shouldn't agree to take something. See, that's why. You shouldn't agree to take something until you know how much it costs. Because then he's going to just take up the price. And he's going to try to scam you out of as much money as possible. So, we get to use it, which is fortunate for us. But I still kind of feel bad for Tiapo. And I also feel bad for making a ridiculous, Brit ridiculous British accent. And now I'm pretending I'm Scottish. So we got an artifact wheel that Nicola was trying to sell. Uh, he's going to let us borrow it, is what he says. Little does he know, he's actually giving it to us. And we're going to go set that up on our world. And have, a, have an adventure. Uh, as you can see, I have artifacts from the previous mission, the very first quest we did. Uh, I'm just going to leave those there. I'll be putting things down as they come up, which doesn't make sense, but I'll be putting them down as I need them, rather than as they come up. So you're going to want to, or I'm going to want to put the wheel right here, and it will bounce around and have a good time and make some double helixes in the sky, and open up to Luan Highway. Which Nicolo is afraid of. I don't know why, because there's not really a whole lot here that's dangerous. Except for me and my massive axe. Oh, I recognize you. Hey, girl. How you doing, girl? Uh. Oh, it's Nicolaji. Why, yes. Oh, and she's blushing again. I wonder where it could be, too. Causing an uproar in Domina by now. Well, that's not very nice, and she just looks looks at us like we have two heads. So we're going to move on and ignore her, because that's what we do to ladies. Because we have enemies to kill. And I will make quick work of them as Nicolo uses his giant floppy ears to bash everybody's brains in. And candy. I don't know if I mentioned candy 
Um, but it is a it restores your health. Either candy or chocolate will drop occasionally, and I believe one of them is a full restore, or it's a certain percentage, and the other one is the same deal. Uh, they're not too necessary per se because uh, your likelihood of getting killed by regular enemies is not very high and they don't drop during boss fights so um, they're not they, they hardly ever come in handy however there is one um, monster that will always drop either an item or a piece of candy and there's actually a pet that you can get that always drops not always but one of his abilities is to drop candy or chocolate I think it is so it's probably likely that the candy is the one that is a full restore if either of them are full restores. So we fight these enemies, the Chubbin Hood, and the Lullabud, and the Stinger, which Nicolo actually took care of. Wow. Yeah, it was useful, and I can't get the crystal, and I'm going to lose out on 4 experience because of it, even though I picked it up, and I should stop whining. And now I'm going to whack this guy to death, because it's fun and exciting, and still not seeing anything that's really worthy of saying it's, it's going to kill us or it's dangerous. I think that you're just being a big baby, good sir rabbit. What do I know? These, uh, the stinger enemies drop an item that will be useful later. I feel like that's the phrase of the day for this LP, but well, it wasn't bug meat. But eventually you get the ability to modify your weapons if you want, and they drop an item called a clear feather, and you can use it to modify another item that these uh, spiny cones drop that will basically um, give you ridiculous amounts of money and I'll show that off once I have the ability to show that off until then just something to look forward to I guess it is uncomfortably warm in my room right now and the fade out music can only mean one thing. It's a boss fight. And these assholes. Three assholes on screen. Hey, 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 hand over to cash. Cash, 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 cash. Uh, no, I'll give you some candy though. Even though you sound hyper enough as it is. Shut up, asshole. And the master of their organization who is a giant uh, mutated scyther and if you played this boss might actually look familiar to someone most people probably because and I'm going to catch a lot of flack for the comments I'm about to make but I never actually played much of Secret of Mana I played it on an emulator uh, a couple months ago while I was supposed to be studying for exams and I didn't enjoy playing it, as weird as that probably sounds, because I know it's regarded as one of the greatest games ever made, ever. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't, I, I'm sure I would have enjoyed it if I had grown up at the time of uh, it being around, but I never got an opportunity to play it back when like, it first came out, or back when I actually still owned any Nintendo system. And we mastered the ability world. So, I recognize that that boss was based off of, I believe, the first boss of that game. And I can't really comment on that <laughs> any further. You said that already. But I don't believe that this guy's actually in it to make me rich. You know who I think he's trying to make rich? 
himself. I'm frowning because I don't like you. Although I do appreciate his message of smiling. Everybody should smile. Smiling is important. And then he just runs off into the sunset. Never to be knowing we're going to hear from him plenty more times after this. Unfortunately. So let's go back to our home and talk to our cactus. And I actually completed that faster than I was expecting to. So I think I'm going to squeeze in one more quick mission before we call this an episode. And actually what I'm going to do before the, all of that is go talk to my talk to my monster corral. That makes sense. Uh, but check on my monster corral and see if my egg is hatched. And it is a cute little buddy. Beast egg hatched. Name the monster. Look. Look guys. It's your favorite thing. The, the name screen. Uh, I would call him Beast Egg, but that'd be silly, so I'm just gonna call him... or her... Derp. Bam! And I'm going to set him to graze because I have no need for this rabbi. A priest and a rabbi walk into a bar and I really had nowhere else to go with that joke. So, I apologize for that. So he's just going to sit out and grace. And, um, another thing, well, one thing I could mention is that if you have, I believe, Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VIII saved on the same memory card as your Legend of Mana save, that beast egg will actually be a bird egg, and when it hatches, it will be a chocobo, which I don't understand why mine isn't doing it for whatever reason. Um, because I know I have those two games saved on my memory card. But it should happen, so if you're playing along and you end up with a chocobo and you're wondering why I betrayed you, you wanted a bunny, A, you now know why, and B, there are, there are other places. Once you unlock the ability to um, find eggs, you can just go out and find eggs wherever you damn well please and get as many monsters as you want. Except you can only hold five, so ignore that. I just said that. But we're going to get started on our next quest. Uh, I think it's a short one. I'm not entirely sure. hope it's a short one. I know which quest we're doing. I just don't remember exactly how long it takes. But if you go uh, up in here, this is actually the inn of Domina. Uh, you've got... This, this lady. I know this guy is from Secret of Mana. I don't remember his name. And you've got that egg. You want to avoid that egg because if you make it pop, uh, it locks you out of a quest. But we want to talk to this chick. I do not know of the mana tree. What do you mean there's no such thing as a mana tree? Did you watch the intro? What happens to your soul after you die? It lives forever. Let's go. So we have to escort this chick to Gaius, who is one of the seven wisdoms. <laughs> Actually, there are technically only six. For now. Um, and this is another character that will become important in a story arc, it's actually one of my... This whole entire game... Saying that statement is redundant, because this whole entire game is fantastic, but this is another really good story arc, and I enjoy it thoroughly, and I'm excited to share it with you. <laughs> but first, we have to do all this stupid escorting, side-questing, hubbledy do. And it's not quite as exciting as punching people in the face. So I'm going to demonstrate what Boink does by talking to him. Because I believe this will help us move faster. But Boink says Boink and he teleports us. And we want to go this way. 
and follow the path this way. Nicolaju Canyon side. Which actually raises a question I have about this game, and I don't know why I'm asking it really, because it's never going to get answered. But if I am able to control the land as I will and place worlds down, it actually raises. Did she just snipe? She sniped all three of those. What a douche. And I forgot that I learned world. I need to set new abilities. And I need to finish my story. I'm able to set worlds down as I please, right? So, wouldn't that make me a god to these people? Like, I recognize the fact that I'm a hero and I'm destined to save the world and bring back the mana tree, but I. I should be more than that to people, but anyway, um, we learned the ability Whirl, so if you use Whirl in conjunction with Push, you will eventually learn Bash. And there's a treasure chest here with Odd Meat, which sounds disgusting, I don't even know what Odd Meat would be, and Gaius the Earth. Gaius, Gius, welcome my children, come closer. That's a terrible voice for him. Uh, he probably sounds more more like gravelly, but I, I don't think I would want to hurt my throat. <coughs> Hold on. Nah, I can't do it. Sorry. Do what your friend wants you to do. So, nothing. You must accept that you must do nothing. And this demon is slowly killing her to death. People have the power to change themselves. That is what she is trying to teach you. Listen to her words. Thank you. I will try to think about this calmly. And now he's going to speak directly to me about an ancient tree around my house who will help me with many things, except he won't help me with many things. He'll help me with about one thing, if that. Um, so, that's that. She gives us a forbidden ring, and that's the end of the quest. Exciting stuff, right? Yeah? Yeah? You enjoyed it? I enjoyed it. So, we'll just go back to our home. And end the episode. And we will all carry on with our day. I hope. And when you come back, um, Gaius said that something is going on in our yard. And you kind of want to resist the urge to uh, go directly to the yard. Because if you don't talk to your little cactus um, and you finish a new quest or another quest, you will lose the ability to tell him about the previous quest that you missed. Although I'm pretty sure by starting the quest Gaius just told us about, you don't finish it immediately. I could be wrong. But anyway, um, I'm going to hide behind this pole for my outro. And um, I've been Cosmogustin. If you like this video, please hit like. If you really like it, consider subscribing. Uh, and feel free to leave any comments, any suggestions, anything like that. In the next part, we will carry on with more quests. We'll start unlocking some new worlds. We'll figure out what Gaius was talking about with a tree that will help us with that many things, which is really just the one things. And I look forward to seeing you there.